Vista LA celebrates 25 years. Sponsored by the SoCal Honda dealers. It is Vista LA's 25th anniversary. Hello, I'm Annabelle Munoz. And I'm Giovanna Lada. Vista LA was a groundbreaking show when it first debuted here on ABC7. It was the first English language news magazine program devoted to the Latino community in Southern California. It's been a platform to showcase our rich culture, but most importantly, a voice for our community. When the show began in 94, one of the first questions we asked was, who are we? We are doers. We're all created for a purpose, and I think once we find it, we just gotta pick up where you're at and make decisions, have faith, and go forward. This is what democracy looks like. Change makers. There's power in numbers. A diverse culture that values family, faith, and community. The contributions of our community are everywhere. This LA shows us where we are, reminds us of what is possible. When one has grown and has opened a door, the first thing that we do is try to bring everybody back in there with us. In the early 90s, the Latino population was the fastest growing minority group in the Southland. The landscape was changing. There wasn't enough programming to highlight all of the good, all the contributions. Understanding the importance of community for the greater good, Vista LA was born with ABC7 veteran reporter Henry Alfaro at the helm. Vista LA, it's the view of Los Angeles, and it's the view on my people. Anoche. Now, Latinos are the largest ethnic group, representing nearly half of the population in Los Angeles. Immigrant families and U.S.-born Latinos are redefining what it means to be multicultural. Latino 96.3, who's this? We combine both languages. It comes natural to a lot of Latino Americans that are growing up here in L.A. Our influence is seen in all pockets of L.A., especially in our foods. Our city has become a mecca for Latino cuisine. I've never had all these flavors in my mouth at the same time, but it's a good thing. From icons and civil rights leaders to everyday people enriching our lives. You have brought so many stories to the forefront. You brought them to our living rooms so our families could watch and be proud of what we do in the community. Vista LA is about sharing your stories of inspiration. I just want to tell all the little kids that have a dream, that think they can't do nothing, or someone's telling you they can't do something, believe in yourself and everything is possible. And there are countless stories of ordinary people making a difference in our community and beyond our borders. Take a look. Now, when it comes to causes of the heart, Ita Pacheco's story is a powerful one. But to fully understand it, she took Vista LA to where her story began, on the other side of the border. Growing up here, did you say, I'm going to come back one day? Did you have this dream? When I was here, my whole focus was I wanted to reunite my family. And today, through her foundation, Corazón de Vida, which supports 10 orphanages in Tijuana, Mexico, she's able to improve the lives of thousands of children, giving them hope and a future. I'm more invested in Dolores Huerta because I feel that she represents uh, the best interest for humanity. Along with Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez, she's been a, a, a supreme warrior for justice and equality. I realized that you could make so many changes once you brought people together, and if they work together, that you could accomplish miracles. And it was that passion that prompted Huerta to join efforts with a young, like-minded activist by the name of Cesar Chavez. Cesar and I met in this organization, and when you saw the desperate need that those workers had, working in the fields, they didn't have drinking water, they didn't have toilets in, in, in the fields. And so when you saw all of this suffering, we knew that we had to do something about that. From farm fields to the streets of Los Angeles, where perhaps there is no bigger hero than a Jesuit priest who has spent more than 30 years fighting gang violence with love and patience. I started to bury kids and and people in the parish when I was pastor at Dolores Mission said, what can we do? So the first thing we did is we started a school and that led to jobs and so then we started our own business. And this place announces the message of kinship. We discovered there is no us and them, there's just us. And there's the young and fearless, like the little girl from Panorama City who asked Pope Francis to help free her father from immigration authorities. I told him that to please help me because my dad is in the process of deportation. 
and I told them that it's also unfair that other families are also going through the same situation. Since this experience, Jersey has committed to helping other children. Why are you doing it even though it's hard for you? I have to be a voice for people who have the fear of not being able to make a change in the world. What's important is that we actually try to make a change. And Vista LA always strives to educate our viewers on the issues that affect Latinos most. And in 1994, the year Vista LA launched proved to be a turning point for one of those issues. Immigration would redefine LA politics for years to come. I still have a very vivid memory of a lot of the stories that I did. I don't recall all of them, but I remember Prop 187. How do you address that issue that the majority of people in California say, look, we want to change. Now you're fighting it. This proposition is plainly unconstitutional, not just the educational provisions, but throughout. We no, no more want a foreign invasion and a takeover of our country than the, than the inhabitants of other countries want us to take them over. It's really that simple. Prop 187 was followed two years later by Prop 209, which banned affirmative action policies in California's public institutions. In 1998, the anti-bilingual education proposition 227 was put on the ballot. This string of legislation was perceived as an attack on Latinos. There's a real sense of anxiety. They feel they're going to be persecuted just because they're Latino without regard to the fact that they're U.S. citizens. This wake-up call triggered a surge in political engagement with more Latinos seeking political office. I think the Republicans better change their march because they have seen the results of hitting on a population that they thought couldn't hurt them because it couldn't vote and wasn't very wealthy. I think this is just the beginning, the beginning of a united voice for all Latinos. Vista LA has documented the rise of new generations of Latino leaders, including Loretta Sanchez, the first Mexican-American to represent Orange County in the U.S. Congress. The reason that I ran for Anaheim is the same reason that I ran for Congress, and that's wanting to make a difference and wanting to make a change. And L.A.'s first Latino mayor in over a century. When does it start? When do you start working? I started at 12.01 this morning. From raising awareness about the need for census participation, in many instances, the parents do not speak English, and so the students will then behave as our ambassadors to get to the parents to get their involvement. No dejaremos a ningún niño atrás. We will leave no child behind. To promoting get out the vote campaigns, supported by a bit of Latina star power. These past four years have been a lot about not just continuing to reach out to our audience and be creative about reaching, reaching out to young people, but also demythicizing what the Latino vote is. Over the years, Vista has also recognized the contributions of many Latinos who have served our country in the military. 38 Mexican-American and Latino men received this nation's highest award, the Congressional Medal of Honor. We've shed light on the impacts of gentrification in historically Latino neighborhoods. We're not saying, oh, we don't want white people, we don't want, like, uh, outsiders. We welcome everyone, but please don't raise our rent. <laughs> Vista LA has heard countless stories from immigrants who have come to Los Angeles seeking a better life. And we've seen the immigration debate intensify again with the shifting political currents. Today, hundreds of thousands of people marched in peace, asking to be a part of the American dream. This is a nation of laws. The first thing they did was cross the border illegally and broke the law. In late 2017, the Trump administration announced DACA would be phased out. When they saw kids uh, being held in cages before they were transferred to federal facilities, I think that was a, a real turning point. Heavy issues, and Vista LA has been there for all of them. Yeah, and we wow. remain committed to that, so thank yeah. you for letting us share those stories. We are just getting started when Vista LA's anniversary special returns, Latinos in Hollywood with vault footage of stars before their big break. And a look at Latinos in education, the challenges and the triumphs. There's much more to come. Don't go away. Vista LA, 25 years, thank you for staying true. Peace. 25 years of Vista LA, incredible. As a Latino, we're always negative. I didn't think it'd go two years. No. So 25 years is good, happy anniversary. 
George with the jokes. Thank you, George. And of course, he began his career as a stand-up comedian. He's gone on to appear in movies and television, and his show, George Lopez Show, had a successful five-year run right here on ABC. Sure did. And since Vista LA's launch, many Latinos have made inroads into Hollywood, with several becoming household names. Before her breakout role in Desperate Housewives, Texas native Eva Longoria was just another aspiring actress trying to make it in Hollywood. Vista LA first met the actress in 2003 when she performed on a stage comedy show called Hot Tamales Live. Hot Tamales Live is now right here on Vista LA. Now she's one of the hardest working women in entertainment. I work here. <laughs> for? For the new editor-in-chief. Years before she embodied Ugly Betty, we spoke with a young America Ferreira, doing theater fresh off her starring role in Sundance Award winner, Real Women Have Curves. It's a couple of memorable moments in the life of this young child in the South Bronx in New York, and it's just a really tough life. We've also seen the rise of other Latina powerhouses like Sofia Vergara. It's becoming less and less a problem from, for Latin people. I mean, we have more roles. And actor-producer Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek portrays legendary muralist Frida. She had a lot of courage to be unique. She was very strange for Mexico at that time, you know. She was bisexual. She was strange in everything she did. In 1997, when Selena Mania hit, we saw J-Lo skyrocket to stardom. This Latina will be commanding an unprecedented one million dollars for her role. And she waved to the audience. They all thought it was to them. And it was something that she had. It makes my hair stand up. And that's what I really want to capture. We've celebrated many Latino triumphs in film. To be here in Hollywood, you know, at a big premiere for a movie based on my family, I had to bring him along. And television. My goal became to have a television series. Working with Edward James Olmos, Gregory Sierra, and Clifton Gonzalez Gonzalez. So Latino, they had a name twice. It's been wonderful. And our successes on stage. It's kind of therapeutic, you know, it's free therapy. People pay me and I tell my life and somehow at the end of the night I feel the catharsis happens, I don't know. And we're not gonna buy you any more food if you keep eating it. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to women. I don't. I say the first thing that comes to mind. Hey, you hungry? <laughs> know that I'm a comic first, and a Latino, you know, I'm, that's part of the package. This is truly one of the legendary comedy troops of all time, and I want you to meet them. Yeah, Here you are, yeah, Culture yeah. Clash. Yeah. Fellas! We're always telling stories that are not told in, on the American stage. In the Heights has earned four Tony Awards, including Best Musical. It's about three days in the life of this uh, block in Upper Manhattan in Washington Heights, uh, which really has immigrants from of every stripe. The Latino market accounts for nearly a third of box office revenues, which has led to more theaters catering to Latino moviegoers. Vista has featured a vast range of movies starring some of Latin America's favorite actors. This priest and this girl finally end up not being able to love each other because of the great fear of God. The day we opened, I was receiving calls. It was like, oh my God, numbers are really, really high. And we highlight the industry's shortcomings when it comes to diversity. Media is a powerful socializing agent. The progress that has been made in the past few years is great, but the underrepresentation for people of color and women is so severe that there is so much more work to be done. To know that I am representing the American Latino community that I care so much for, and I'm as much an American as anybody else, is I take great pride in that. In our 25 years, Vista LA has even met a few Latino directors who have made history on the biggest stage of all. Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. When Alfonso Cuaron won the Academy Award for directing this year, it was not only his first Oscar, it was the first Oscar for best director for any Latino. This just marks a closure. It is great to see their careers involved, but that is true. There is still a long way to go in terms of representation. So we hope to see many more Latinos making their mark. In because there is so much talent in the Latino community. Now, coming up, landmark moments in education for Latinos in L.A. Plus, the Latin explosion and the musicians that have followed. 
Welcome back. It's no secret access to quality education strengthens a nation, but it can also change the course of a student's life. When Vista LA first debuted, roughly half of all Latinos were dropping out of high school. The Latino community was facing an educational crisis. 25 years ago, LA Unified absolutely was in a crisis, wrestling with overcrowded schools. LA had not built schools for 34 years. We had half of the students not finishing, not getting to graduation. It was the mid-90s. Controversial initiatives were targeting immigrants. What fears are actually taking place in the school district? There's anxiety. What's going to happen to us? From Prop 187 in 1994, threatening access to public education for undocumented children in California. Our Constitution starts off with we, the people of the United States. It doesn't say we, the people of the world. To Prop 209 in 96, when voters passed one of the most divisive laws in our state's history, eliminating affirmative action, indefinitely changing college admissions for Latinos. By taking away affirmative action, we're not moving forward, but instead moving backwards. Two years later, Prop 227 ignited a debate over bilingual education. Families worried their children would be taught only in their native languages. We are here this morning to announce the filing of a lawsuit that's intended to give parents a choice in the education of their children. Math is international, four and four are eight. Those that are the valedictorians of their class, they're out of bilingual programs and they are the prize of yeah, the community. We don't want to strip their bilingual heritage. Ultimately, Prop 227 passed. All students would be taught primarily in English, but there would be a shift in that decision. So while before you had a conversation, should we be multilingual, today everybody wants to learn all kinds of languages. So dual language programs have gone from 80 programs to now 180 programs. Our movement is about transforming schools in urban America, and LA is absolutely the leader in doing that. We've opened 131 brand new schools. We've ended forced busing. We are modernizing new campuses. We are here at Mendez, first school built in Boyle Heights in 85 years. I also want to tell you about dropouts. 47% of our Latino children were dropping out. Today, LA Unified is at 13% for all students, 13.2% for Latino students. And whether immigrant families, newcomers to this country, everybody can tell a story of how powerful education is when we get it right. When we come back, Latinos rock the U.S. music world. And local heroes in amateur and professional sports. Hi, this is the band Mana, and we want to wish Vista LA happy anniversary, many more years to come, and thank you for all the love and support. Juan? Feliz aniversario. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias, Mana. The great rock band from Mexico, considered the most successful Latin American band of all time. And Vista LA has covered Latinx musicians spanning just about every music genre in our 25 years. But 1999 would prove to be a defining year for Latinos in the U.S. music scene. It was the start of what came to be known as the Latin Explosion. It was a high gloss boom with Ricky Martin living La Vida Loca, Jennifer Lopez dancing her way onto the music stage, and hearts melting across America for Enrique Iglesias. How do you deal with the fact that you've become not only a success, but an object of desire to so many young women? I don't like it at all. Because I'm not out here to sell my life, and I'm out here to sell my music. And the door was left wide open for more Latino pop artists to follow. Some crossing over from Spanish, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, uh. and others crossing over to Spanish. In the early 90s, rock en español, or Spanish rock, arrived in LA and quickly became a popular music genre among Latinos. We spoke with many of the artists that emerged. Everybody was asking, hey man, who are you? Who are you? And I said, no, I'm Juan, is from Colombia. Los Angeles has also been a tour destination must for musicians from Mexico and all of Latin America. They talk about the story of people that live here in this country. They talk up very straight to them. Pepe Aguilar is the number one selling artist of regional music in the U.S. and Mexico. Either you, you are born with it or you're not. And if you're born with it, you will die with it. 
Vista LA has even sat with a few icons of Chicano music. After nearly 25 years, Los Lobos just keep on playing the music that's true to their roots. We knew that the nightclub thing wasn't for us, so we always were kind of like on the, on the fringe of things happening in East LA, you know, we, we just played what we enjoyed playing. Mexican-American music legend Lalo Guerrero, known as the father of Chicano music, was the first to introduce swing and boogie to Latino audiences in the U.S. The girls all dressed very nicely. The gentlemen, the fellas all came suits and ties all the time. Everything was like real cool. We've honored pioneers of salsa and Latin jazz. Arturo Sandoval first brought Latin sounds to American jazz in the 70s. I always said that the music, music saved my life. And we've looked back at forgotten Latino music history. Cannibal and the Head Hunters were performing uh, Land of a Thousand Dances, and um, Frankie accidentally forgot the word, and as legend has it, he started improvising the na 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 na. Vista LA has documented the growth of our most cherished music traditions. I was told that I should be happy with maybe two or three thousand people the first year. We sold out and we've been selling out ever since and this is the second year we do two days. Over the years we've tracked the evolution and fusion of music genres. No one get you down. Lonnie Jordan of the legendary band War says his band's unique sound is a result of the musical diversity he grew up with here in Los Angeles. I've always had a connection with Latin music. I grew up listening to all the, the Fania All-Stars, Oscar de Leon, Tito Fuente, the list goes on. Through music, which is what's beautiful about hip-hop, it brought together a lot of people, Latins and Blacks, and now we're taking that and make a fusion with our music. And we featured Latino musicians making their mark in the classical music world. Symphony conductor and a founder of her own orchestra, Sonia Marie de Leon de Vega, has broken new ground for Latinas in the classical music world. It's always bothered me that classical music has been seen as something elite. When Gustavo Dunamel stepped into the spotlight as the new music director of the LA Philharmonic, his much anticipated debut was met with overwhelming fanfare. I think it's great for the city of Los Angeles. I think, I think they're going to start city. calling the town uh, Gustavo Wood. But many of our favorite stories feature LA's homegrown talent. I feel honored and, very, and really um, fortunate and blessed to be a part of this band. He put on his guayabera, I put on my Mexican, my Mexican dress, and, and we perform these, these songs. Still to come, Latinos make their mark in the world of sports. Plus, legendary teachers who inspired generations of students. My early years of my professional career were so crucial, and this LA has been right there with me, covering my career, covering my gold medal, covering LA. So happy 25th anniversary. You guys rock. Thank you to Oscar. Oscar de la Hoya's title fights were must-see television for many years right here in Los Angeles. Now the boxing champ is one of the biggest promoters in the sport. Of course, boxing is a staple of Latino culture, but in our 25-year history, we've featured standout athletes in just about every sport. In the level playing fields of competitive sports, stories abound of underdogs overcoming seemingly impossible odds on their way to glory. And Vista LA has been there to share the stories of our local sports heroes. Once I graduate from college, my ultimate dream is to be on the LPG tour. Here she is at the U.S. Women's Open. We've also profiled the people covering our favorite pastimes. La pelota se va, se va, y despida la con un beso. Se puede cuadrangular. And whether you wear Dodger blue or angel red, L.A. is a baseball town. Vista L.A. has followed the journeys of the many Latino players who have called L.A. home. My father was born and raised in Guadalajara, and uh, my, my mother was uh, you know, born and raised in California. When I go home, it's not the baseball player that comes home, it's me. Over the years, we've witnessed the growth of football. And the legendary rise of new soccer stars. We've sat with the boxing champions of today. Vista has also been invited to training camp before some of the biggest fights in LA history. 
I don't really know what his problem is, but it's a genuine animosity he has towards me. I'm gonna clear it up, hopefully September 14th. We've shared the stories of yesterday's heroes. His name is Lafitte Binkai, and he's won over 9,300 horse races. After our Super Bowl year, Sports Illustrated uh, put me on the cover and they called me the toughest Chicano. My mother said, what is this? I said, mom, that's what young people are calling uh, us. Uh, and, and I'm proud to be Chicano. Very proud. Now coming up, the power of a teacher. A look back at the lasting impacts of iconic LA educators. And Latino entrepreneurs taking LA by storm. Welcome back. Since day one, it's been important for us to recognize the role models who've inspired younger generations. Among them, unforgettable East LA teacher Jaime Escalante. In 1997, there was Teacher of the Year Javier Gonzalez from Whittier, honored by President Clinton for his service. But Gonzalez was personally inspired by legendary East LA math teacher Jaime Escalante, who became one of the most popular teachers in the country after his classroom success at Garfield High School was depicted in the 1988 movie Stand and Deliver. One of the greatest things I learned from Jaime Escalante is that you first have to motivate the child. Once you motivated them and they believe in themselves, then you can give them anything and they will succeed. Escalante passed in 2010. As the community mourned, Vista was there. The one thing that he left with me is confidence. Just being able to reach deep down and pull that confidence. Um, he was not only a great teacher of mathematics, he was great in understanding human emotion. I was in the, I guess you could say fortunate class now of 1982. Everything I did to emulate was how he did it. Um, the compassion he had for the kids, the passion he had for the profession. Another local hero was Lincoln High School teacher Sal Castro, a relentless advocate and prominent figure in the walkouts of 1968, where students protested their right to equal education. The more I saw what was not happening for the young people, the more I felt a weight on the shoulders. The beloved activist passed in 2013. He gave us permission to be proud of who we are, not better than anyone else, but never to let anyone else make us feel like we were less than them. Fast forward to a younger generation of educators empowering Latinos to push boundaries. I strongly believe that it's important for us to help diversify corporate America. Angelica Gutierrez, once told she was learning disabled, is now an assistant professor at LMU, recognized for outstanding teaching and mentorship. I decided when I arrived at UCLA that my community was counting on me, my family was depending on me, so I owed it to them to do everything that it possibly would take to do well. When Vista LA's anniversary special returns, the entrepreneurial spirit from mom and pop shops to Latino business owners revolutionizing entire industries right here in Los Angeles. I've been a big fan of Vista LA for a long time. I want to congratulate them on 25 years of showing my people doing great things in this beautiful city of Los Angeles, California. Go Vista! Go Vista! El Sueño Americano, the American Dream, is what many Latinos in L.A. continue to pursue and achieve on their own terms. Immigrant families are known for their strong work ethic and entrepreneurial spirit. Here are just a few of the success stories we brought you over the years. I was going to conferences that were non-Latina, and I knew that if we created a space where we would see ourselves identified and represented, and it, and it would have our flavor for life and for the way that we create, and, and to be able to be bilingual and to be able to be Spanglish, if we created that space, they would come. Powerhouse influencer Anna Flores created We All Grow, a space for trailblazing Latina women to come together, shape their business ideas, and lead the way in the digital industry. We've covered a vast number of entrepreneur stories, but none have captured the hearts of our viewers more than the hidden neighborhood gems. Well, what can I create that is long lasting and is used by the everyday person? Ta-ta, so I found a new spot in one of the cities I grew up in and where their one of a kind churros and horchata are stirring up a lot of buzz. We just knew it, it felt right and we went for it. 
The number one thing was to make sure that it wasn't paramount because this is where David and I grew up and growing up we didn't have places like this. We weren't expecting a lot of people to come in and then we just kind of opened a door and the line just started forming. It was amazing. Just two years later, they ventured into a new food concept with throwback donuts. Being Mexican-American, I kind of just thought and said, okay, let me incorporate some of our Mexican candies into donuts and see how it works out. And that's kind of how the idea came about. We do this for our community. We know what people want because it's what we wanted when we were growing up. We love celebrating businesses creating positive change in the community, like Homegirl Cafe, a business invested in serving up second chances under the leadership of Father Greg Boyle from Homeboy Industries. We grow, prep, serve the food that, that you'll see on the table, and it's also about grow, prep, serving these young women and men that are getting their second chance in life. If the portals build it, the customers will come. When we opened the first week, the line went all the way to the park. Since its early days in Glendale, Vista LA has been there to watch the iconic family-owned bakery expand beyond their dreams. Well, welcome to Don Francisco's Coffee, Casa Guana, my family's um, first brick-and-mortar coffee shop here, right here in the heart of downtown LA. The Gavinas started their coffee business here in the 60s, but their story began in Cuba 150 years ago. My grandparents came here with very little, but they were able to create a business and build a life, and we're determined to push it into the fifth generation. Little Libros, uh, the idea was born when I had my first son. I really wanted to ensure he spoke Spanish and was connected to his uh, culture. With zero publishing experience, we figured it out and Little Libros happened. It definitely feels like a dream come true. We're both Mexican-Americans from immigrant parents. The thought that, you know, here's these two girls from a little city outside of LA in, you know, Linwood. It's magical, it just, I, it's almost like, if these kind of things don't happen to people like us. But there's one story that stands out in our vaults. Back in 1999, we met a teenage mother named Nora, who against all odds was determined to overcome and succeed. Um, I was 16. I was living in Sydney Valley at the time. I just took a, a home pregnancy test and it came out positive and I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I just, my first thought was, how could God do this to me, you know? I have everything going for me. Scared but even more terrified to remain a statistic, Nora shifted her focus to her academic studies. The young mom got accepted to some of the most prestigious universities, Harvard, UCLA, MIT, and the list goes on. Today, with three MIT degrees under her belt, Nora, who these days goes by Nora May, paved a distinguished path for herself as co-founder of Make in LA, a startup company rooted in innovation, technology, and creativity. A very creative place that inspired people to work on their ideas, to work together. Uh, along with pursuing my own career, I've always had a passion for developing other people. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate 25 years of Vista LA. It's been an amazing journey and a privilege sharing your stories of resilience and success. So thank you so much for letting us share these stories with you and for your feedback.